Hello there to all the amazing people watching this video and my channel. In this video we will see the strongest characters from the Tekken series. This list is the average of many different popular sources that gave rankings for Tekken characters, based on their backstory, lore and results at the King of Fire Fist tournaments. This was purely the average that I derived after scanning multiple sources and I left my opinion outside of this list. So if you disagree with this list, please let me know in the comments below. Now, Without any further delay, are you ready? Let's get started! The Tekken series have had quite the storylines and it's quite a challenge to discern what is canon and what is not. I tried my best to stick as much as possible to the original and authentic storylines, excluding non-canon stories and plots. So here we go! Number 20. Kazumi Mishima One of the main bosses of Tekken 7. Kazumi Mishima was wife to Heihachi and Kazuya's mother. Playing the story mode of the game shows how Kazumi is the progenitor of the devil gene and the reason why the Mizimas are fighting now. Seeing as she used to study under Jipanchi Mizima, Kazumi mixes the Mizima style karate with her own Hasiko family style karate. Kazumi warned her husband about the chain of hatred and begged him to release her because of their love for one another. Despite her pleas, Heihachi noticed it was a trap and stated to her that she was no longer the Kazumi that he knew. And then he wasted her. Since we don't know how Kazumi would face off against Tekken fighters throughout the story, I only added her to this list because she possessed the Devil Gene and she would have been probably powerful. But she lost early to Hihachi. Oopsie daisies. Number 19. Wang Jinrei. He's been old seemingly forever, but Wang Jinrei always reaches the end stage of the King of Iron Fist tournament whenever he enters. In Tekken 2, he never lost, and drew martial law instead. Tekken 5 had him lose to the eventual winner, Jin Kazama. And that too because Wong had become advanced in age by then. Wong's fighting style is one of tranquility, opponents underestimate him only to be overcome by his time shots. Wong never goes in for the kill, choosing to put his opponent down enough for them to admit defeat. Just imagine how unbeatable a young Wang Jinrei would have been. Number 18. King 2. His mentor was an alcoholic priest who dressed like a Mexican wrestler to raise money to fulfill his dream of building an orphanage, and he himself is doing the same in order to keep that dream alive. After the first king was killed by Ogre, King's big heartedness was best seen when he forgave Craig Marduk for killing his mentor. His motives are pure in nature. His wrestling moves are a contrast to the martial arts of the other characters, which is another way of why King comes across as unique. Number 17. Nina Williams. Nina has been in the series right from the get-go and is popular for the stone-cold apathy city plays. A ruthless killer, Nina has usurped his sister in a mainstream appeal, with her serious demeanor staying true to her fight moves that are a blend of quickness and power. And like Anna, whose story has largely been about one-upping her sister, Nina has had more depth. She's had an arc of realizing she's Steve's mother, along with her later allegiance to Jean as his bodyguard. Tekken is credited with bringing impressive female characters to the forefront and Nina happens to be one of the major ones. Number 16. Jun Kazama Jun is a wildlife surveillance officer of the conservation group WWWC, who uses Kazama-style traditional martial arts, a martial art that has been handed down to the Kazama family for generations. She was taught the ways of the Kazama-style martial arts and developed strong psychic abilities. She had an equal fight with Ogre, and one could say that she stood her ground notably, all in order to protect her son, Jin. Number 15. Lee Chowlon, a young orphan, adopted by Heihachi and raised him as Kazuya's rival in his dojo. Lee is one of the most popular characters in the series for his manipulated style of play, smug personality, and his trademark thumbs up and catchphrase, excellent. Lee is ultimately good-natured and holds a great contempt towards Kazuya and Heihachi. Considering he was trained by Heihachi and raised fighting Kazuya, and the fact that this later stated that he trained with Paul Phoenix and Martial Law, one can easily suggest that Lee is up there with the best Tekken fighters. Number 14. Brian Fury Brian is popular among fans for his ruthless personality, hard-hitting fighting style, and trademark evil laugh. Throughout the entire Tekken series, it is clear that Brian's motivation is nothing more than to create havoc and misery wherever he goes. His selfishness has been shown multiple times. Brian is very powerful. Basically, he died and then later came back to life by Dr. Abel 
as a prototype for a cyborg army. Number 13, Yoshimitsu. There's no doubt that Yoshimitsu is one of the strangest fighting game characters to be made. The seemingly immortal ninja, the most striking aspect about Yoshimitsu is his appearance, which changes in each game for mysterious reasons. And the latest one is seemingly always cooler than the one before. Thanks to his skills as a ninja, Yoshimitsu has managed to appear invisible at times, as well as accomplishing victory over empowered beings like Brian Fury. He might not be in the elite level, but he is very close to it. Number 12. Lars Alexanderson. Since Lars was the protagonist of Tekken 6, we never saw him lose to anyone. He ended up either stalemating or winning against Jin, because the narration wasn't clear, and walked off toward another assignment. The fact that he's never lost to anyone gets him in a position in the top most rankings, but Blood Armor did do the trick here, so you can't call Lars the best ever. Regardless, his fighting style speaks for itself, as Lars' erratic offense looks impossible to read for everyone. His youthful raids only contributes to his attacks, making Lars a truly dangerous individual. Also, he is a very underdeveloped character that will become stronger in future installments. Number 11. Feng Wei. Now here is an interesting one, and very difficult to fit in Gorak's spot. Feng's introduction to the series was based on his quest to become the greatest fighter in the world. He went so far as to kill his own master, after the latter has scolded Feng for his brutal ways. Even when his goal of achieving the fame scroll turned out to be for nothing, because the scroll simply stated, he who destroys all other fighting styles and makes them his own shall become a warrior superior to all men, the Dragon God. <laughs> like, duh? Feng continued his quest for power. He's been shown completing extraordinary feats of strength despite not having the boost in abilities like the Mishima clan. Feng has still been beaten by wiser masters like Wang Jinrei, but his overall quality is almost second to none. Number 10. Huarang. His barrage of kicks should be enough to tell you that there's almost no going past Horang's all-out assault style. As far as feats go, he's only ever lost to Devil Jin. He was able to beat Human Jin when the latter was vulnerable and being overcome by the Devil Jin, and thus has never actually lost to a regular person. Still, you have to believe that Kazuya or Heihachi would probably be the kind of opponents who could probably beat Horang. So he can't rank all the way up there. However, being in the top 10 itself is immensely impressive, considering the names Horang finds himself in the company of. Due to his laser focus to beat Jin, almost no one can beat Horang fair and square. Number 9. Steve Fox. You might get turned off as he doesn't have kicks, but that's your mistake since his ability to dodge attacks is crucial in many instances. Now, just how strong Steve might be? He is technically a super soldier and only one of the few that survived the process. Heihachi began his own research into the terrifying power of the Devil Jin. Trying to replicate this superhuman strength, the Mizima Zaibatsu started a genetic modification plan with the goal of replicating the effects of the Jin on regular humans through the creation of a synthetic Devil Jin. So basically, Steve possessed powers similar to that of the Devil Jin, in a way. Or that is implied at least. My best way to describe it is, imagine a boy receiving the serum to become Captain America, but he also undergoes Witcher trials that only 3 in 10 survive, and that boy survives and goes on to become a master boxing champion. I hope you get my point. Thankfully, Steve's scenario is canonly having justice so far, and his story will probably be further explored. Number 8. Paul. He's never had plot armor or any intrinsic powers, but Paul has been the best out there purely because of his skills. Taken 3 saw so Paul beat Ogre, and he should have been the rightful winner of the tournament, but Ogre turned into two Ogre before Paul came to know of this. We don't need to list any more Paul's skills since Ogre was confirmed to be the greatest fighting monster who ever lived by that point. Paul not only beating him, but also walking away unscathed proves he was one of the most superior human beings of the time. It's a shame, Tekken 5 onwards, he's been made to look like a joke. In reality, Paul is technically on par with characters like Azuya Mishima. Number 7. Heihachi Mishima. His source of powers remain wonky since we don't know how he was able to beat the Devil Kazumi and Devil Kazuya despite not having the Devil Jin, and Heihachi wanting that Jin to become powerful. Yet that doesn't really matter seeing as Heihachi still has achieved those feats. 
his total acceptance of his evilness has meant he's been able to become more dangerous and wanting to achieve his mission. He defeated Jipanchi and sealed his father away to die. Heihachi also killed his wife and his son on fair and square grounds. There's nothing this guy won't be able to achieve when he puts his mind to it. He ranks here only because everyone above him has either beaten him or proven to be more powerful. Note that Heihachi defeated Jipanchi before the latter was possessed by the evil entity that made him powerful. Heihachi Mishima is dead. <laughs> Number 6. Akuma. Now here is a character that I didn't want to include in this list, because I don't feel he is a Tekken character, and because he is so overpowered and extremely strong, even though he just joined the series. Character who transitioned from the Street Fighter series into the Tekken universe, Akuma instantly established himself in a class of his own. This was through his battle of Heihachi, who had to fake his death to escape. Akuma has the ability to transform himself into a being of higher power and was undefeated in Tekken 7, with his final class with Kazuya left to the interpretation of the player. Not having a distinct martial arts style, Akuma is impossible to predict and combines this with his extreme power, Stealer. Number 5. Kazuya Mishima And here is one of the older and most important characters alongside Heihachi. Now, before Tekken 7, we would have ranked Kazuya lower than Heihachi, but the former's victory in the game's ending sealed it that Kazuya was more powerful than his father. I mean, Kazuya has now killed Heihachi once and for all, right? Whenever Kazuya's human form starts to lose, you can bank on the devil to consume him and claim victory. Even on his own, Kazuya has only ever been beaten by a handful of characters. This usually involves Kazuya's inflated ego, making him lose more than anything. No human character can hope to beat Kazuya, and only supremely powerful beings stand a chance to fight the devil. Like Heihachi, Kazuya's total lack of morality has meant he's brutally slain his opponents when needed, his father included. Number 4. True Ogre Since Ogre had beaten every single supreme fighter in the world, except all, we can be certain that True Ogre eclipses everyone else. This being could breathe fire on his opponents and could fly as well. Even Paul would have lost to True Ogre, as there's no way any mortal man had a chance against this creature. Heihachi was out of his league with True Ogre and he needed to manipulate a gene to do his dirty work in beating True Ogre. On paper, True Ogre should technically be able to beat Jin as well, and he only lost because of storyline purposes. Without any plot involved, True Ogre is supremely powerful, thanks to his mysterious abilities. That's why he also has a place above Kazuya himself. Number 3. Jipanchi Mishima The first of two bosses that made us rage quit at Hanken game. Jipanchi Mishima was a true beast when it came to fighting him. He had incredible and annoying powers, such as stunning the fighter, having a belly that could spit fireballs, and an exterior that was almost impenetrable. Till the game's end, the true form of the Jipanchi was never fought in the story, and this version had devilish horns along with the ability to fly. Gameplay-wise, you always need specific fighters that can beat Jipanchi, otherwise the character always beats you. The mysterious devilish creature that consumed Jipanchi also enabled him to live without food for half a century, and it never reached its ultimate form. The reason I also consider him to be stronger than true Ogre is because he also knows the Mazima style karate, which makes him even more powerful. Number 2. Azazel Now this being was just ridiculously powerful, and we hate him for it. Azazel made us rage quit. I can't even list the number of powers this being had. You can just imagine any power in the book and Azazel had it. Even Jin's victory over it was due to some plot device that saw him punch Azazel to its death, which was a lazy way to defeat him. Other than that punch, he was so powerful that Azazel is one of the hated characters as gamers basically didn't have a fair chance when fighting him. Also, True Ogre was beaten by Jin pre-devil. Azazel had to be beaten by Jin with some devil powers, and, well, even though Azazel was seemingly destroyed, Azazel barely escaped extinction in spirit form. Number 1. Jin Kazama Well, you saw that coming, didn't you? Jin Kazama was the true hero of the games from Tekken 3 to Tekken 5 before turning into the villain and eventual anti-hero in Tekken 6 and Tekken 7 respectively. 
While Tekken 7 makes him a supporting character, you will be most invested when he is in the story. I mean, he's the guy who's beaten every person being ranked on this list that he faced. Jin Kazama is the unquestioned main character of the Tekken series, with this bringing him victory against every opponent he's faced. Chronologically, he beat True Ogre in Tekken 3, Kazuya and Hei Hatsumishima at the same time in Tekken 4, Deepan Chimishima in Tekken 5, and either stalemated or beat Lars in Tekken 6 before one-shotting Azazel at the end of that game. He's been heavily protected by the plot, but that's no excuse to deny Jin from the top spot. And, if you don't consider Jin to be the strongest, then Devil Jin definitely will step in and take in the title as the most powerful character in the Tekken universe. And that's it. This will be my list of the most powerful characters and beings in the Tekken universe. Thank you all for watching. Do you agree with this list? What changes would you do? And definitely, which other characters would you include in the top 20? I have to say that this proved to be very hard for me and I left some very strong characters out of this list, but I just somehow could not fit them in. If you liked this video or if you found it any interesting whatsoever, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications so you don't miss the upcoming videos. Till the next one, have an amazing time and I'll see you all later! For those of you that stayed till the end, could you guess which is my favorite character from the Tekken series? I have some hints throughout the video. I will give a heart to the comment that finds out who is my favorite character.